This is a three by four foot canvas, a linen canvas, stretched linen. And I'm using oils today. And this is a scene from the St. John's River where we visited a few days ago. Now, even though I used oils, I did tone this board with, a, uh, with acrylics. Now you can put uh, oils over acrylics, but you can't put acrylics over oils. So this uh, uh, canvas was toned with a combination of uh, burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna. That just gets rid of that stark white look on the uh, canvas that's really hard to work with. Not so much in a small painting, but a large painting like this. I really do prefer to tone the, uh, the canvas. And a lot of that burnt umber look and burnt sienna look will, will actually show through on the final painting. I always begin my paintings by using the dark colors first. And when I say dark, it means I stay away from anything like yellow ochres, any whites. I often just leave white off my palette. So I use my transparent colors, which basically have no white in them. And then uh, I get those rich, dark tones. Of course, here at this point, I've gone past that and I have started to use uh, a lot of other colors, including a lot of light tones and white. When using oils, it's especially difficult to get uh, passages darker when you have some white underneath them. It's much easier to make things lighter than it is darker. So that's one main reason why I start with my darks and I work towards my lights. Uh, the other reason is in an area like where you have trees, the darkest part of those trees is going to be the sort of the interior of those trees uh, where the light isn't uh, showing up. And so you, I work with that first, and then I bring my uh, leaves and so on on top of those dark areas because those uh, leaves on the outer side of the plant are naturally more light, have more light on them than the interior sections. Here I am working on the water, but I knew this painting from the very start, I would need some kind of central interest in this painting because as it is now, it really doesn't have one. It's just lacking a center of interest. So uh, my intention from the very beginning was to put a uh, shorebird, an egret or a heron or something like that in the painting. Hadn't decided quite what it would be yet, but uh, I wanted to continue more with the basic shapes and uh, colors of the painting and then uh, decide on that center of interest a little bit later on. I'm very much of an intuitive painter. I, I never plan things out very much. Uh, I just work on things as they come up here. And that cypress tree there just didn't seem to be the right thing to have there, especially since I was going to put a egret or a bird in there. So I uh, blocked that part out. I'm never afraid to change things. It's just paint and it doesn't take that long to uh, block something out that I've already put in. Never afraid to make changes. And that's one reason I don't put in a lot of detail in the beginning of a painting is because if I want to make those changes then I wouldn't have invested a lot of time uh, in making a subject that had a lot of detail. So I'm not quite as uh, afraid to take something out that I didn't have a big investment in. I have been working from a reference photograph that I took, but at this point the reference photograph has been put aside and I'm just working on a painting as a painting. I'm not really trying to reproduce anything that I did see in the reference photograph. There was a pier in the distance and uh, I did like something like that up here or some uh, little areas like that do give the painting some human interest rather than just purely landscape. Here I started to paint in an egret, but it wasn't long before I just decided this wasn't quite the look I wanted. And again, I just made that choice to paint it out and start again. It really didn't take that long. So here I'm working on another egret here uh, with a different oh, wing configuration. And I think this would work out much better. Again, I'm just never afraid to make changes in a painting. 
generally I don't make this many changes in a painting, but this uh, particular piece here, it just seemed to work out that way. I've taken a lot of photographs of birds over the years and I have them all stored on my computer and categorized according to the uh, type of bird it is, whether it's in flight or not in flight. So I know exactly where to go and find a good reference photograph when I do these paintings. And I think that's real important. Saves a lot of time. Yeah, I think this pose looks a lot better than the uh, first one I started to put in there. Sometimes you just never know about these things until you actually get them on the canvas, no matter how much you might prepare. So this painting has really changed from a landscape painting to a wildlife painting, simply because the uh, subject matter, the bird, is so large in the piece. At this point in the painting, things really slow down. The first part of a painting goes very quickly, but at this point, it's all about making minor and small adjustments. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching.